you have to then grab the IP address. Remember I said those IPs in the config file are not probably gonna be what you... Yeah, so grab this IP address from Goku and you're gonna need to place that inside one of the Ansible tasks, the one for join domain. And this is so that the other Windows machines can actually resolve the capsulecorp.local domain name and then uh, join to that domain. So go ahead and just open up that file and here where it says IPv4 underscore address, just change that IP to match whatever IP your Goku VM has. So once that's done, um, I think we're ready to move on to the next VM. And I think that was Vegeta. So just like before, we'll do Vagrant up Vegeta. Don't forget dash dash provider Hyper-V. And if you set up everything, this one should just kind of work without issues. As long as uh, you specify the right network switch, which for me is option three, Capscore pen test, and you've set that IP address, um, it's gonna configure Vegeta's DNS to point to Goku. So then when it says, I wanna join the capsulecorp.local domain, uh, Windows is actually able to do that. And of course, Ansible has some other um, things to install. I think there's a vulnerable Jenkins server and maybe some other cool stuff to play with uh, on the Vegeta VM. So that's done uh, relatively uneventfully. Um, here I'm just doing the same thing that I did before, just double checking uh, that I can authenticate with an Active Directory credential. So we'll do that and it works, cool. Vegeta is working. So now we'll move on to the next machine, which I think is Gohan. And, and the Gohan machine seems to be the one that a lot of people have issues with and, and put issues on GitHub and stuff. And that's just because the way, the only way that I could find for Ansible to install MSSQL um, was a little bit janky. I did, I did get it working, but you'll see here um, in a second, I'm gonna get an error message with Ansible. And I, I did a couple things to try and troubleshoot. I think I did it live while I was recording this. So you'll see me fumble around, retry the try the provision a second time. It still errors out, but then when we really investigate the error message, it's just a simple configuration. There's a default memory set in um, MSSQL server. I don't know what it is, uh, but we're trying to change it uh, to 1024. It may already be 1024. That's, that's possible. Either way, um, setting that configuration isn't working. So I just commented that line out um, and, uh, and, and, and the Gohan VM is, is working just fine. So when you're getting these errors, it's really good that you, you kind of pay attention to what Ansible task it's, uh, it's trying to do. Um, and uh, that's how you can kind of troubleshoot what, what, what you need to do to fix it. But as far as I know, Gohan in its working state works just fine. So here I'm gonna I'm gonna rerun the the provision, and um, I think I get the same error message, and I, I just move on and, and ignore it because it, it doesn't matter. The VM's working; it's connected to the domain. Um, we can attack it. Uh, there is a vulnerable uh, MSSQL service installed, which we can attack. So we're good to go. Okay, the next one that we brought up was I think Trunks, Vagrant up Trunks. Yep, Provider Hyper V just like before. Here, here we got um, a, a, a strange error message that I think was coincidental um, because it wasn't one that I'd seen before. And so I simply re-ran the provisioning and, and, and it worked just fine. So you, you should feel free to try the, you know, trusty reboot method. I don't know what the problem is, so I'll just try it again and hey, it worked the second time. There's no shame in that as long as you get your system uh, up and running. So here I've got this strange error message that I don't really understand and I'm just gonna lazily rerun the provision and magically it worked the second time. So I'm happy. Uh, and there's one more VM, Raditz, I think. So Raditz is, is really kind of optional for you. Um, 
I, I put this VM there because, you know, if you're, if you're, we're trying to simulate a real network pen test. And so obviously we don't have hundreds and thousands of systems to attack, but you know, when you do, it's, it's often that you see systems that there isn't anything there. It's not like, you know, the hack the boxes or the, or the offensive security, uh, you know, or the pen tester Academy labs that you've, you know, trained on where every single system has some vulnerability that you're supposed to take advantage of. Lots of times there's just kind of benign hosts sitting on the network and, um, you know, there's really nothing to do. Um, so, so that's what Raditz is. You can feel free to install some additional uh, vulnerable. So uh, now that that's done, I think we're gonna go and bring up the Kali VM, the, the Pentest VM. It used to be an Ubuntu system and I had configured it and installed some hacker tools for you guys. and. Um, you know, some things weren't working and, and I just decided to go with Kali because, uh, you know, Kali works out of the box. Um, I wouldn't necessarily do, you know, uh, professional pen testing on a regular basis with Kali, but I think for like a learning and educational um, scenario like this, I, I think it works great. So once that's set up, you can access it in a couple of different ways. Here, I'm just gonna use SSH to give you a nice little uh, command line access to Kali. And just to kind of demonstrate that it is uh, connected to the same network that our uh, scope of IPs uh, in the CapsuCorp uh, domain are. We can just use like a crack map exec to uh, do an SMB sweep of that uh, domain. If I type the command correctly, that is, which I'll do momentarily. And we can see some information about the uh, hosts uh, join to the capsulecorp.local domain. So everything's working there. Uh, we're good to go. We can start our, our pen test, but you know, most people are going to want some sort of, uh, you know, graphical experience with Kali and, and, and I would as well. So that's perfectly fine. So the way to do that is just double click on the VM inside the Hyper-V manager, and then you can just log in with the vagrant, vagrant, um, default password. Now, when I did this, I noticed that the VM was kind of slow. It was kind of clunky. It, it honestly wasn't, you know, the best. Um, user experience. And I think that's why I wanted to show you just connecting with SSH because that works really smoothly. Uh, but it turns out this is actually a, a known issue and the folks at Cali are nice enough to uh, have a, a write-up, uh, which I'll, I'll link to, and you'll see me uh, visit in just a moment. There's a, there's some settings that, that you have to have to change. There's, there's two of them. And I think I only did one on camera, but, but both settings are, are mentioned in this uh, Cali article. So basically you just want to make sure that your enhanced session mode is enabled. That's something you'll do in the Hyper-V manager GUI. You'll just go to settings and then check a box or something uh, to enable uh, advanced uh, sessions. But then um, this command right here, you have to run this in PowerShell to set this enhanced session transport type to HV socket. It's set to something else by default. So we'll see if I was, um, smart enough during this recording to shut down the VM first, which you do have to do um, in order for this uh, change to take an effect. And it looks like I was, or at least on the second time around I was, I could have easily edited out the, the first time, but yeah, shut down your VM, run uh, this uh, little PowerShell command, just, just copy and paste it right from the Kali tutorial, make sure to set the name of your VM correctly. And then um, once that's done, you should be good to go, provided that you also did that settings change, which I frustratingly did not demonstrate for you uh, on this recording, I apologize. So now when you go to connect, um, you can actually, just like with the Windows machines, you know, you can specify uh, a different resolution, give yourself a little bit more uh, screen real estate, which I, I definitely support. And um, so I'm just gonna pick something here just to show it's working, click connect. And now you'll see this um, Xorg login screen, which looks a little bit different, but once you log in, um, it's just like Kali, just like you're probably used to seeing. And I found that just the user experience was just much better. You know, I'm just gonna move around a couple windows for you just to show you that everything works. So um, yeah, you're good to go. If you have any questions, hit me up on Discord.